All right then, so now we've made a details page to show the details of any ticket that we click on, which is awesome. But I want to come full circle now and I want to bring the discussion back around how Next.js likes to serve up from cache whenever possible to improve performance. And not only does it apply to fetch requests, but it also applies to the pages themselves so that they can be rendered way in advance at build time into HTML pages and then distributed to a CDN and served up quickly when they're requested. And that means that the page doesn't have to be rendered on the server every time a request comes in for it because it's already been rendered during the build stage. And that pre-rendered page can be served up much quicker from a CDN whenever a request for it comes in. And this is sounding very much like something called static site generation or in Next.js terms, this is called static rendering. And whenever possible, Next.js likes to use this strategy to speed up your application and improve performance. But it can't do it for every single page because sometimes pages need to be rendered at the time of request. And when that happens, it's called dynamic rendering. So for example, on the tickets page that we have, we specified that we don't ever want to serve the tickets data up from cache. And that means that Next.js can't then employ the static rendering strategy to this page because it knows that the data being rendered inside it might be constantly changing. You know, it's always fetching it every time we request a page. So therefore it can't predictably render that page ahead of time and serve it from a CDN because it can only do that if it's confident that the page content or data inside it won't be changing over a certain time period. But if we were to set the revalidation to something like a day or some other value, then Next.js could use static rendering for this page because it would know that it doesn't have to refetch the data for that time period. And therefore it could be confident that for that time period, the content on the page wouldn't change. And then when that time elapses, it would just refetch the data again, rebuild the page using this static rendering strategy and redistribute it to the CDM. There's also other times where static rendering isn't really appropriate, whereby you're relying on dynamic values such as authentication values, cookies, search parameters, etc. But for now, I don't want to get bogged down by that. Instead, what I want to do is look at how this static rendering could be applied to the ticket details page. So if you think about it, it's actually quite hard for Next.js to statically render all of the details pages ahead of time because it doesn't know all of the ticket IDs that it needs to fetch data for and create pages for. And we could have hundreds of tickets in the database somewhere that we need Next.js to individually fetch and render a page for. So normally we would think that we'd have to dynamically render the pages on the fly whenever a request comes in for one, using the ID, the route parameter, but there is a way we can tell Next.js in advance all of the IDs so that when we build the application, it knows all of the pages and routes that it needs to make. And that way they can be statically rendered and served from a CDN. And the way we do that is by using a function called generate static params, which we have to export from the file. So let's do that first of all and also make sure it's an asynchronous function because we're gonna be fetching all of the tickets data inside of here. So it's this function's job to basically get a list of all of the IDs for all the tickets at build time so that Next.js can make a page and a corresponding route for each one of them. And to that end, we need to return an array of objects in this function where each object represents a single page or route that we want Next.js to make. And on that object, you have to specify as a property, the route parameter name. So in our case, the ID and the value of that route parameter, which will come from the data itself, right? So we're going to be returning an array of objects that looks a little bit like this, where each object just has that single ID property and the value of the ID, which comes from the data. So then the way we can do this is by fetching the entire list of tickets and then mapping through them to return that array, which looks something like that. So let's say const response is equal to await fetch. And then we want to fetch from localhost port 4000 forward slash tickets. So let me just paste this in here. And then we want to get the tickets. So we'll say const tickets is equal to await response.json because this is an asynchronous task right here. So then we have the tickets. 
and then we need to map through them and return an array like we just saw where each object just has an ID property in that array. So we'll say return tickets dot map and then we'll fire a function for each ticket and then inside that we will return an object. So let's surround this with parentheses right here to return that and the object is just going to have the ID property which is equal to the ticket dot ID. Okay, so that's all we need to do inside this function. Now, during dev mode, when we're running the dev server as we are doing, this is still going to work pretty much the same as it has been doing so far. But when we build the application now for production, it's going to make all the routes and pages for the tickets ahead of time. And that's going to mean the performance of the site is much better because all those pages are already pre-rendered and ready to be served. Also, because we gave a set amount of time for the revalidation property, it means that if a ticket changes or gets deleted down the line and that ticket gets multiple visits, then Next.js is going to try and refetch that data and rebuild the page or get rid of it if needed as and when, which is nice. But if you set this to be zero, then it kind of means the whole generate static params function is a bit redundant because you're saying you don't want to cache any days anyway and you want to dynamically render the page on every visit to get the fresh data so we wouldn't really need it in that case anyway for now let's try this out in dev mode in the browser to make sure everything works the same way which it should do and then later in the course when we build the application we'll see those static pages being built at build time so let's just check that these are all working i'm going to click on this one yep working next one working and then this one, yep, working, awesome. Now there's one more thing I wanna to add to this page and that's an instruction about what to do when a page hasn't been built ahead of time for a specific ID when a request comes in for it. And we've got a couple of options. First, we could make it so that if a request comes in for a ticket ID that hasn't been pre-rendered, then we return a 404 page. And the way we do that is by exporting a constant at the top of the page called dynamic params. And then we'd set the value of that to be false. And that tells Next.js just to return a 404 page if a user tries to land on a ticket page which has an idea of something different from any of the pages it's already made. Or we could set this to be true, which is actually the default value. And then for any requests for new tickets that don't already have pages made for them, Next.js is going to try and fetch the data for that ticket and create a new page for us in case the ID exists. And then after it's done that once, it can generate a static page for future requests to that ticket. Now, in order for this to work, we have to edit our fetch logic just a little bit. And all we have to do is check that the response is okay from that fetch that we try and make. Because if it's not okay for that new ticket, then we want to manually serve up that 404 instead. So inside an if statement, we can run some code if the response is not okay. And then that code is just to invoke a function that Next gives us called not found. And what that function does is basically serve up the 404 page for us. And we also have to import that function from Next forward slash navigation for it to work as well. All right, so let's give this a shot. I'm gonna to go to a ticket that does exist first of all. So with an ID of one, that works. Now, if I go to a ticket that doesn't exist, like one, two, three, then we should get the 404 page. Yep, we do. Awesome. Okay, cool. So that's working. The functionality is there. However, this looks really shoddy. I don't like this default 404 page that Next.js comes with. So in the next lesson, we're going to create our own custom not found page.